Hello, my name is Hugh Williams, Director of Public Affairs for the Canadian Automobile Dealers Association. Welcome to an important presentation on auto emissions in Canada. We are going to examine the key factors on auto emissions. Hopefully you will find the presentation both informative and entertaining. To begin with, we are going to cover three points. First, we're going to talk about air emissions, smog versus greenhouse gases. Second, we're going to start talking about solutions to the emissions problems. And third, we're going to talk about California standards and their implications for Canada. This slide explains there are two types of auto emissions. First, there's smog, which is made up of volatile organic compounds, NOx, and particulate matter. Smog makes the air hard to breathe, turns buildings black, and, of course, turns the air brown during smog days. The second type of auto emissions is greenhouse gases. In the case of automobiles, this is largely CO2. This is plant food, or the same kind of gases we exhale during human respiration. Greenhouse gases have been linked to global warming, and of course that causes concern across Canada. This slide demonstrates how the auto industry has addressed smog, and there's a lot that's been done. Through emissions control systems, new vehicles in Canada contribute only 0.1% of smog in Canada. That's a tenth of 1% of the overall smog picture in Canada, a very, very small part of the overall smog equation. This slide demonstrates how the automobile industry has tackled smog successfully. Tier 2 emissions control systems now eliminate 99.3% of VOX and 98.8% of NOx emissions. This means that when you compare a 1987 model vehicle, it produces as much smog as 37 new vehicles. This is one reason why we are working with government to get older vehicles off the road, an initiative that is supported by CADA and of course environmental groups, because older vehicles produce far, far higher degrees of smog. This slide shows how clean new vehicles are in relation to smog. The simple fact is that burning one quart of wood equals the entire lifetime emissions produced from 10 Tier 2 SUVs. That's an astonishing fact that would surprise most Canadians. Again, this slide demonstrates how clean new vehicles are with respect to their new smog control systems. Government statistics show that painting a room equals driving an SUV from Ottawa to Vancouver and back. Again, most Canadians would be more likely to point out SUVs as part of the smog problem than they would be burning a cord of wood or painting a room. This slide deals with greenhouse gases, or the second type of auto emissions. Many people think cars are the biggest greenhouse gas contributors, and nothing could be further from the truth. Again, government data demonstrates that new vehicles produce only 1% of greenhouse gases in Canada. That means if you stop selling new vehicles in Canada, it would only address 1% of the greenhouse gas problems. Overall, all cars and trucks are less than 13% of greenhouse gases. The big villain, in terms of greenhouse gases in Canada, is stationary fuel consumption. Think of coal-fired electric plants and other uh, electrical generating facilities that contribute up to 50% of greenhouse gases in Canada, a far bigger impact than the automobile industry. This slide demonstrates that auto assembly has also reduced greenhouse gases. In fact, Auto assembly does not even register in a ranking of emissions intensity for key Canadian sectors. The story on auto assembly is that we are not producing greenhouse gases. This slide demonstrates the key factors influencing greenhouse gas emissions when you look at the automotive sector. You have to look at fuel pricing, vehicle use in terms of kilometers driven, the technology and fleet turnover, you have to look at cleaner and renewable fuels, as well as their overall carbon content, and you have to look at the overall fleet size. There are many, many different factors. We need an integrated plan to accelerate emissions reductions. Green technology is the first part of the plan. Improved fuels is the second part. Action on fleets. 
is a huge component. The fourth point of the plan is an accelerated plan to retire older vehicles. And the fifth point in the plan is consumer behavior. We will now address each one of these policy points individually. The technology side of the equation in the auto industry is very exciting. You've got over 20 vehicle manufacturers competing head to head to produce the best technologies, the cleanest technologies possible for consumers. Today, we have over 70 technologies that are currently improving fuel economy. Whether it's variable valve timing, cylinder deactivation, low rolling resistance tires, alternative fuels such as E85, biodiesel, or hydrogen, technology is part of the solution and consumers should be embracing it as the industry is, but it's not the whole part of the answer. This slide highlights the importance of clean and renewable fuels. Again, using government data, just two examples make the case for better fuels. First, if you look at E85 made from corn, it's a 40% reduction in greenhouse gases versus standard gasoline. If you look at E85 created from wheat straw, it's a 64% reduction in greenhouse gases compared to gasoline. Clearly, clean and renewable fuels are a key component to reducing Canada's greenhouse gases from the transportation sector. Green fleets are also part of the answer. Vehicles that come home at night are perfect for clean fuel use. When you think of fleets, think about Bell Canada and their service vans, or the RCMP. There are more than 350,000 fleet vehicles sold in Canada on an annual basis. If we can ensure that these green fleets are taking advantage of the best fuels and the best technologies, we can make a huge impact on reducing greenhouse gas equations. This slide reiterates the point that older vehicles must be pulled from the road. When you look at one 1987 model year vehicle, and I want to emphasize there are over one million of these vehicles on the road, those individual vehicles produce 37 times the emissions of a new vehicle. Accelerating and getting these old vehicles off the road is a huge part of Canada's future greenhouse gas reductions and, of course, reducing regulated emissions for smog. Consumer education is also important. We need to support consumers with green driving education and green maintenance. As part of our commitment, we're helping drivers learn about things they can do to improve fuel economy. You can begin by planning trips and driving routes to avoid congestion. Observing speed limits is a hugely important part of the equation. We all know that accelerating evenly and driving smoothly can also make a difference. Limiting the use of accessories that can increase drag and reduce fuel economy is important. And don't carry more than you need. Take those golf clubs or old equipment out of the vehicle so that you're not burning more gasoline. And finally, and most importantly, consumers need to make sure their vehicles are properly maintained. Perhaps nothing is more important than making sure that car is running smoothly and the emission systems are at peak performance to reduce both greenhouse gases and, of course, reduce the impact of smog. Technologies cannot do it alone. A balanced system approach must include strategies to address consumer behavior, the number of vehicle kilometers people travel. We have to encourage people to be responsible. Inspection and maintenance programs are a huge part of the equation. Vehicle fuel efficiency, we're making improvements on that on a yearly basis. Fuel price plays an important role in greenhouse gases. Transportation infrastructure and management needs more time and attention and integration. As we mentioned, new vehicle technology is coming fast to the marketplace and will continue to make an impact and consumers need to be encouraged to adopt that newer, cleaner technology. Alternative modes of transportation need to be considered by consumers and supported by governments. And finally, fuel formulations in terms of both quality and supply are very important to the overall emissions equation.